This podcast is brought to you by Voice and Vision, bringing help, hope, and healing to individuals, families, and communities affected by mental illness, addictions, and disabilities in southeastern Pennsylvania. Financial support for this podcast is provided by a Veterans Trust Fund grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Military and Veterans Affairs. Welcome to Untold Valor, a podcast with a unique focus on veterans, featuring stories of courage, recovery, perseverance, and strength. Listen to hear veterans share their perspectives on what it's like to battle mental health challenges, combat addictions, and overcome other adversities unique to those who have served. Welcome to another edition of Untold Valor, Veterans Recovery in Action. Once again, excited to have a great guest on the podcast to talk with us about what life was like for them during service, after service, and and how they were able to transition and move their lives forward in different ways as well. And very, very excited this week to have a special guest on the show. I know how to say that every week, but they're all special guests. Uh, We have Chief of Police of Springfield Township, Joseph Daly, with us. Uh, so looking forward to hearing about his story a little bit and sharing with those out there. And so, as always, if you've got some things that you need to talk about or you need some help, well, the great team at Voice and Vision is here to help you uh, with some of the transitions that you might might face, as well as the folks at Compere Core. So we have links and resources in the show notes of the podcast and at the end of the show as well. So check that out if you need so. But now let's get started and uh, and welcome in uh, Chief Daly. Uh, Joe, as he told me to call you, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Very good. Good to have you here. So uh, we always start out with a real simple thing. Give us a little background on you, sir, like uh, time in the service. Obviously, I've seen that you you know, were in the service for a number of years before you transitioned back to civilian life where you're still serving. But let's kind of go back to uh, your service time. Mark, I started, uh, you know, Vietnam was in uh, full swing. I was in high school in uh, 1967 as a senior. Mm. And uh, I wanted to enlist. I'm one of 11 children. Uh, wow. Two of my brothers were in ahead of me. So I joined the Marine Corps while I was still in high school, waited until I graduated, and then went to Paris Island. And then from there to Lejeune, and from Lejeune to uh, Geiger, I was a machine gunner on the ground. I carried an M60 machine gun. So I came home, uh, went to uh, Camp Pendleton for jungle warfare, and then shipped over to Vietnam. Right as I was concluding my first tour, I signed up for a second tour because uh, I I just felt connected with my brothers over there. Right. Uh, yeah. So it was uh, my company lost 88 killed in action while we were in Vietnam. Oh, wow. uh, over 70 when I was there. I arrived there in uh, uh, 1968, March of 68, and I returned home uh, the end of November 1969. So. So and, yeah, uh, I, I see you did two tours, yeah, and uh, yes. and so you went in. So you were, what was your final rank, sir, when you came out? Well, I was I uh, <laughs> I joined the Marine Corps. I was a buck private. Uh, they <laughs> before you left the states, they made you a private first okay. class. So as a PFC, when I made it to Vietnam, less than a year later, I was a sergeant. I got a combat promotion to sergeant. Uh, General Simpson gave me a. Uh, Called me down of the field. He said, what's your name, son? I said, Corporal Daly. He said, no, it's Sergeant Daly. <laughs> so I got a combat promotion to sergeant, which I was always proud of, except when my first sergeant said to me, do you know how important that uh, promotion is? I said, I don't have a clue. He said, well, nobody below the rank of a two-star general can take that stripe away from you. Nice. And I said, you think that's good news? I said, I could, I, if I do something wrong and I have two-star generals and above sitting on my board, I'm going to be in jail for the rest of my natural <laughs> oh, life. Oh, <gee>. yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I see what you're talking about there. Yeah. yeah. And you so mentioned, they want to screw that up. Yeah, exactly. Don't want to mess that up. But you mentioned Paris Island in Lejeune. That's uh, that's my neck of the woods here. I'm, I'm in North Carolina. I, I lived there yeah. in that area for a long time. So... Uh, very familiar with that. And of course, as always, you know, thank you for the service and the time that you put in. So one of the things we focus on here, Joe, is is the struggle sometimes that veterans face when they've, well, they've left service, right? Uh, and they've come back home and they've transitioned to civilian life or whatever the case is, or even many years later with PTSD. You know, one of the big things that we talk about often here on the show and is trying to get, you know, help and resources. And, and a lot of times it's just Hearing someone else's story that's similar to theirs, right? Because, you know, you kind of walk the same walk, talk the same talk, right? And so it's one of those things where it kind of helps. Obviously, with Vietnam, there's a lot of PTSD after the fact on that and things of that nature. You know, have you seen like a lot of improvement? You've obviously transitioned to the civilian life and the police force. Improvement in, in help and health care in those arenas? 
Mark, if there's a difference between day and night, that's the difference. Yeah. When uh, they didn't prepare any of us, you know, we were all trained to be warriors, especially Marines. We were told we were indestructible, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that we could take it, uh, face anything. But nobody told us when we came home that we would have issues. Uh, my issue is I had survivor's guilt for the longest time because I couldn't understand why I came home and so many of my brothers didn't. And it, it, it really ate at me. Yeah. And I made a promise when I left Vietnam for the last for my last day that as long as I lived, I would never forget them. And uh, every major occurrence in my life, I would think of my brothers. And, uh, you know, when I got married, when I had my first child, mm -hmm. grandchildren, every major event in my life, I would pause and think about them because so many were under the age of 20 years old and yeah. never got to live their life. So that bothered me. Uh, I went to the VA when I first got out and uh, they actually made me feel like I was a criminal. Oh, uh, wow. They made me, uh, you know, just the way I felt. So I never went back. And then fast forward I, uh, a few years ago, I, I wound up with diabetes. And you know how our wives are. Uh, my Donna pushed me to go and check it out. And I, I got a um, pension for diabetes. You know, my hearing loss, I was a machine gunner. So, you know, you don't right. wear ear muscle in combat. Right. So my hearing was shot. I got tendonitis and all that. And just recently, uh, my VA doctor talked me into calling the VA uh, psychiatrist about uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I, when I talked to the guy, I said, hey, doc, listen, I'm not digging foxholes in the front yard. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> right. uh, I'm not uh, reliving a war every day, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I said, I have friends that, that I, I visit all the time at our reunions that never left Vietnam. You know, they're here, but 55 years later, they're still living in Vietnam. And it's, uh, mm. I'm not that guy. Uh, and he said, well, let me tell you something. Do you think about it? And I said, yeah, I think about it. And uh, I think about the guys. I think mostly about the guys we lost. And he said, well, you have post-traumatic stress disorder. He says, there's just two types functioning and non-functioning. He said, you have functioning post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, here I am 75 years later, 55 years after I come home, and I'm just uh, coming to terms with this kind of stuff. But a point you made, Mark, and I can't say it loud enough and long enough, veterans out there do not suffer in private. There's more help than you can possibly ask for out there. All you got to do is say, help me, and it, you'll, be, you'll be inundated with people who only want to help you get you back on your feet, help you get these things behind you, especially combat veterans to put that uh, to pass. I worry so much about our uh, Afghanistan and uh, veterans who uh, in Iraq. I, yeah. I worry about them. Uh, unlike us, you know, I, I was a kid. And when I came home, I was 20 years old. I couldn't vote and I couldn't get a beer, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but that's where it was. But I had no, I had a girlfriend. I wasn't married. I didn't have children. I didn't have a career. You know, and these uh, young men and women serving today, uh, multiple uh, deployments into hostile areas. And uh, you got to tip your hat to them. And I, I plead for them to not put this stuff aside, to please reach out and get help. Yeah. You'll be amazed at how much is there and how many people really want to help you, especially the VA today. I mean, actually, they drive me nuts now. They're so... Uh, they're constantly on the phone or constantly reaching out to me. So it's important. The benefits are there. Go for them. Yeah, that's that, that boy. Just well said. Could not have said that better. As the father currently of a of a 26 year old in the Navy, I you know I certainly you know second that sentiment. Right for the for the younger folks serving today, it's like hey, you know, get the help when you can. And there definitely is a lot more of it. Uh, so it, it, you know, I I really appreciate you sharing that message with our listeners. And it is is interesting, right? So you 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 kind of felt like you weren't, you know, yeah. I mean, I think about it, but I, I feel fine, right? And and the doc yeah. saying, well, no, this this stuff can linger, right? And so you got to have these resources. And you talked about seeing your buddies and things of that nature as well. And that goes a long way. And that's what a, a lot of I think is work really great about what Compere Core and Voice and Vision do is is really trying to get people with other like minded people so they have that you know kind of camaraderie. It goes a long way. It does. It absolutely does. You know, and, uh, you know, Lincoln, with, we started when they first reached out to me about coming to our uh, reunion. Uh -huh. uh, we meet the guys I served with in Vietnam are still around. We meet every other year at somewhere in the country. But I missed the first five or six because I was afraid I was going to go there and we'd start talking about it. And it was a it was a 
it was a door I tried to close, not successfully, but I tried to close that door. And I felt that if I went, it would open the door and uh, uh, might cause me some concern. Nothing could be further from the truth. Ashley has helped me with the closure, meeting with uh, meeting with my brothers and, and talking with them and uh, knowing about their families and everything. Mm -hmm. Originally, there was a lot of talk about the war. Now we're old. We're getting old. So we talk about our grandchildren and our, and, and our right. health issues, you know, that kind of stuff now. So. That's good, though, right? I mean, so you're kind of evolving through that. And, when you know, Joe, when you came back, obviously I was reading in your bio here, you switched to becoming a police officer. You said you came back in 70 and you immediately went to the police force? Uh, yes. Uh, I came back in the end of November of 69. I joined the police force in uh, March. I wasn't 21. And I had to wait till I was 21. Oh, okay. They did, they did the background for me. And, uh, you know, I, I got a great story about that, Mark. Sure, please. In those days... To be a policeman, you had to be over five foot eleven. You had to weigh a uh, certain vision, be able to physically fit, and you had to weigh one hundred and sixty five pounds. Uh, I came back from Vietnam. If I weighed one hundred and fifty pounds, I was heavy, you know. <laughs> and I step. I we're in the uh, process for getting hired, and I step on the scale. I say, "Here I go. I'm done." To my amazement, the scale goes up to one sixty five. And I look back and Sergeant Bernie Lochran, who was a uh, veteran, didn't serve in the in the war, but was a veteran, had his foot on the scale. And he said to me, kid, you can't possibly get any skinnier. <laughs> and, uh, now, there was somebody, a, a veteran, that reached out to another veteran, and it changed the course of my life. I wound up, uh, I was in Lower Marine for 39 years, and I worked myself through the ranks and was a superintendent of police when I left there. And uh, now the chief of police here in Springfield in Delaware County. And it's that service. I think when I came home from Vietnam, the Constitution, I, I love this country. I love our Constitution. I love what we stand for as a nation. Yes, sir. I wanted to continue uh, that. So it, it was just a natural transition for me to go to into police work where you're providing service to others in need and you're honoring and defending our constitution of this great country. That all has value and meaning to me. And being a policeman has helped me through that. Uh, I, again, and, uh, well, so, so well said and, and what a great story, right? So, you know, reaching out, just kind of giving you that little nudge and yeah, you've been basically in the police force and, and serving since 1970, right? All the way through the present. So obviously that's been a lifelong career. And did you, did you keep in touch with, uh, with the gentleman that helped you get on the scale? Uh, unfortunately, uh, Sergeant Lockhart passed away, uh, Many years ago, but uh, I've never forgotten them. Yeah. Uh, that's why I keep telling veterans, veterans take care of veterans and uh, just show a fellow veteran kindness. And uh, for sure, along the way, if you can. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's all about trying to, you know, give back and, and figure out ways to uh, say, hey, look, I see somebody maybe struggling with something that, that I can relate to. Right. Uh, and yeah. every, everybody could use a hand, uh, you know, a hand up as opposed to like a hand out. Right. That's correct, Mark. And uh, that's what the uh, veterans organizations are about. That's what the VA is about. Uh, you know, uh, I had one guy said, uh, you know, and I had a little bit, too. I thought about the guys that came in with no legs or no limbs and mm -hmm. uh, arms missing and the stuff they went through. And I felt that save that money for them. So, but uh, uh, I can tell your audience without hesitation, all those guys are taken care of and there's still plenty of money left over for us. Who mm. feel that we aren't aren't deserving? Yeah. If you serve, you're de you're deserving, and if you're having issues, you're deserving. So that uh, self esteem and not to, uh, hey nothing nothing's got me. I'm too macho for that to bother me. That you're on the wrong trail. Get off it and get on the right trail. Indeed. And we've talked about that with other guests as well, right? That's a great point. Sometimes, depending on, you know, you said earlier, there's tons of resources in today's day and age versus what they used to be. It's out there. Reach out and ask for the help. But also, don't feel that level of pride that you you can't say, well, I'm, I'm too tough to get help or whatever the case might be, right? Uh, because everybody, again, could use a hand up sometimes. Uh, absolutely, they can. And that's, uh, you know what? And and it's up to us veterans, too, to reach out, look for veterans in uh, distress and reach out to them. So your commitment to each other doesn't end. It ends when you when your life is over. Mm. During your life, you have to be committed to your brother and sister veterans. And we got to look out for one another. Yeah. And I think societally, too. Right. I mean, to your point there, as our society is is certainly struggling with that kind of thing right now. 
Uh, and, and you felt that call to serve, you know, back home as well as in the civilian world as a police officer for all these years. You know, we, we just kind of we just need to be a little bit more, uh, you know, kinder to each other. Right. I mean, you know, fundamentally, I think people just want to be or hopefully, you know, want to try to be good to one another. And it's it's tough sometimes, but you know, it's, you got to you got to be the first person to start it sometimes. Right. If you see something not going great, you know, try to be the change. That's correct, Mark. You know, and. I did a life. I respect everybody. I don't care. He just committed a robbery or shot three people. I'm not going to treat you differently. I, I treat everybody with dignity and respect. Because you know what? They know they did something wrong. And it's not my job to make them know that they did something wrong. Right. My job is to bring them to justice. And uh, and you can do that without rubbing it in or uh, street justice or any other nonsense goes on out there. Hmm. And people respond to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm proud to say I've been a policeman for going on uh, finishing up 54 years, and I never hurt anybody. I've been in dangerous situations, but I uh, never had to uh, kill anybody or seriously hurt anybody in the line of duty, and I'm proud of that. And I have faced armed robbers, murderers, uh, and all that in my career. So it's just been, I think people know and respect you when the uh, uh, you respect them. It's a two-way street. Yes, sir. Wow. Well said. Uh, boy, I tell you what, thank you so much for coming on and, and talking with us, Joe. Uh, it's been a fantastic you know, chat with you. I like to usually wrap up the conversation with, you know, and you've already shared so many great messages anyway, but like if there was one thing that you could kind of share to a veteran or really anybody, especially because you've seen so much in your time as a police officer as well as in the armed services, just kind of a message of, of uh, whatever, you know, a hope or optimism, whatever you'd like to kind of share as we wrap up this uh, this episode. Well, it's a message of hope. Now, don't give up. I don't, I don't care what your circumstances are, where you've been, how you got there, and there's always hope for a better day. And the VA services, veteran services, there's so many programs out there. Reach out, and they will. you'll be amazed at how much they will come to your aid and help you through whatever crisis you're, you're facing currently. Yeah. Well said, sir. Well said. Well, Joseph Daly, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief Daly, for being here. We certainly appreciate you and appreciate your time. And folks, again, if you've got some uh, things that you need to get off of your chest or you need some help or you need to talk with someone, we've got those resources for you in the show notes and the tab there. So just click on that. There's also some information that will come up here at the end of the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to Untold Valor and share the podcast with others who might benefit from uh, hearing the show and checking out stories of other folks folks just like them uh, through their military careers. Again, Untold Valor, Veterans Recovery in Action. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Untold Valor by Voice and Vision. We hope you found the information and resources discussed today helpful. As always, thank you for listening and for your support. Remember to stay connected with us through our various social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to visit the website, voiceandvisioninc.org. That's voiceandvisioninc.org, where you can sign up for our blog and find free resources and information on upcoming events, webinars, workshops, and get support. You can also access our free help and hope guide for individuals and families struggling with substance use and addiction. If someone you know is struggling, please reach out for help because you and your life matter. Remember, the National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available to you at any time by dialing 988. We are all ambassadors of hope and recovery. And if you want to share your story, please contact us. Compure Corps is also looking for veteran mentor volunteers and veteran participants. To find out more information about Compure Corps, please call 610-541-0790. That's 610-541-0790. You can find all the links and contact information for the resources mentioned on today's episode by checking the description in the show notes section of your app. Thank you again for tuning in and for your support. Until next time, this has been Untold Valor.